In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to model an impressive and realistic stack of banknotes using Blender. If you are interested in stock photography, you know how interesting stacks of banknotes are. In this tutorial, let's create an eye-catching and high-quality stack of banknotes and get a beautiful result. Open the workspace and delete two objects in the scene. I select each one and press the X key and then select delete. Let's delete the light. Later we can edit ourselves if necessarily. We can usually make the banknotes through the plane. So let's add a plane to the scene. I press Shift A. I select plane under mesh. When I select it, you will see the scale value on the right side. When we think of a banknote, it has a rectangle structure. Although it varies according to the banknote. Let's enter the values closest to the standard here for now. I'm giving scale X a value of 7. I'm now giving Y a value of 3. Look, it has such a proportion. If there is a size problem according to the banknote we are using, we can change the scale values under object properties. Now we are going to transfer the banknotes that we have already prepared here. I'm switching to material mode so that we can see the banknotes we added to the scene here. We add them here from the material properties tab. So I click on this and Click on the new button to create a new material. Since the images we will add are images, I click on the yellow icon of base color and select image texture here. After doing these operations, let's select the front side of the banknotes on our computer by clicking the open button and click the open image button. Look, my banknote is like this. I used such a banknote as an example. If we look at the number of faces, we see a little narrowing. What should we do? We need to expand it a bit. I go to object properties and expand the value 7 a little bit to the right. I want to make it 8.5. This proportion, this width seems much more logical according to the width of the banknote I used. Now let's look at the bottom of this banknote. And when we look at the bottom, we will see the front side. This is not correct of course, because our banknote also has a back side. We have an image prepared for the back side, but in plain logic, when you add a material, it automatically appears on the back because there is no thickness. But what we need here is to assign two different materials to one plane of an image. But as I said, since plane has this problem, we will do this with a different method. Let's open the shader editor from the options on the top left. With a few edits here, we will be able to integrate the back of the banknote into the scene. If you look at this, the front JPEG we just added to the scene connects to the plane we added and tries to analyze it with a single image. By pressing Shift D, the D of duplicate, I duplicate it. And by clicking on the folder icon, I select the other image on the computer and click the open image button. See, front JPEG and back JPEG are both here now. And we are going to need to mix RGB node to merge these two. Let's move them to the right because we will put them together. I go to add from the menu above, I select color and I select mix color and I make the necessary connections. I take the string from color, I connect it to A. I take the string from color here and I connect it to B. And then I connect result to base color. And now I need a geometry node. Under add, under input, I select geometry and look, there is an option here called back facing. Let's edit the scene again. And when I add this node, when I add the geometry node, you will see back facing. And I need to connect the back facing option to the empty point of the mix node. And then let's go back to the view we just had, the 3D viewport view. Now let's see that this is the front side and we have the other image on the back side. Look, it's very nice. But here is the problem. This image needs to be flipped in the original. We can see that the face numbers are reversed. If I open the image on my computer and quickly flip it and save it and then select the background image again in the shader editor, it will be fixed. It looks a little bit dark because it's down here. And this is the front side of the banknote. So this is how you can enrich these plain objects that don't have any thickness with multiple materials. When you think of banknotes in groups, you can have about 50 or 100 in a stack. So how to make these groups of banknotes? What is the best method? Because in stock photography, these banknotes can be very preferred according to their place and concept. We will do it by adding modifiers. 
Let's go to the modifier tab. Select the array option under add modifier. Assuming there are 100 in a stack, I'm going to change the count to 100. See this normally adds 100 to the right as standard. Here we have 100 banknotes. And then I uncheck the relative offset option here. And then I check the constant offset option just below it. If you look at the properties of this, I change the distance x value from 1 to 0. And I change it to 0 0.01 on the z axis. See, when I do this and we look at the banknote in the workspace, you will see that it rises on the z axis. But it still doesn't look realistic as it is now. We can make it a little bit more realistic. Logically, to make this text look more realistic, each of banknotes needs to have an input and output. A uniform high is not suitable for this. So we need to make small position movements, small rotation movements. And there is another method you can use at this point. I delete the array modifier from the modifier that we just added. And then let's expand the timeline below a little bit. We are going to modify this with the geometry node editor. I select geometry node editor from the options on the left side. And then I click on the new button. When I click on the new button, you will see two nodes. Let's disconnect them for now. Then I select mesh from the menu and then mesh line. The count value here determines the number of banknotes in the stack. So I change it to 100. What did we say? We were using the Z axis to overlap each other. So let's change the offset value here to 0 0.01. So it will look like they will overlap each other in very small amounts. This will create a realistic banknote effect at the end. And then I come back to the mesh option under add again. I select the mesh to points option under operations. And then I connect the output of the mesh line to the mesh input of the mesh to points. And then I come back to the add menu again. And I select the instance on points option under instance. And I direct the points output here to the points input. Let me move these down like this. What you see right now is a node system like this that we have done so far. And then I take the geometry input that we just moved and I drag it over the instance. I drag this value over the geometry. See what we have done so far is actually reflected to us as the result of the array modifier. But we will improve it a bit more and make it look more realistic. Again I select translate instance under the instances menu under the add menu. Let's put this in a nice place like this. I'm going to drag this geometry link into instances. I'm going to drag this value into the geometry. And now let's add a new node. I'm going to go to this option under add vector and combine x, y, z. Let's put this in a nice place here. And again, in the same place under the vector, we will add random value. If you have trouble finding it here, you can use search under add. For example, I'm typing random here. I see the random value here. Let's edit here by clicking on it. Let's update the values here. I'm going to make the minimum value minus 0 0.05 and the maximum value vice verse. So I'm writing 0 0.05. I'm setting the value here to be on the y axis because this will make the random value according to the y axis. And this will show us the money stakes a little bit more in and out. And then I direct the vector value over translation. And if it doesn't show up, there is a problem. Now if you look closely at the banknotes, we can see the inputs and outputs here much more clearly. And that adds a bit of realism. Not only on the y axis, but let's also give a little bit of rotation. I'm typing this in the search section right under add. I'm typing rotate. I'm selecting rotate instances. And here is what we are going to do with this value. I actually need to put instances in between. When I put it in between, it does these operations by itself. That's good. I duplicate combine x, y, z with shift D and I drag the vector value here onto rotation. We need to add a random value again like we just did. I can get it from here. I type random and bring the result here. And this time instead of making the value 0 0.5, I make it minus 0 0.2. This is the maximum. You can also write it directly with a dot. I make it 0.2. I connect the value to the Z axis. Look, before connecting, let me show it like this. This is before connecting and 
This is after connecting. You can see the in and out in a slightly more randomized way. I can do the same thing on the y axis. Let's minimize this. And I'm duplicating it with Shift D. Let's edit this to minus 0.25 and 0.25. The value with y this time. And that is how we have made our edits. I can close this now. I'm dragging it down. And we have created a customizable banknote system. We have duplicated a banknote into a hundred. And we made it look realistic with random placements. You can make it look more realistic by adding light and shadow to it. Yes, we were able to make it like this with a few light and render settings. In this video, I showed how banknotes and stacks can be made. That's it for this video. I hope it was useful. If today's video was useful to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video.